Kristen. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Board of Selectmen's meeting of January 11th, 2016. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, this meeting is being uh, taped and broadcast by ACMI, and we have a member of the media here. I just wanted to point that out as we usually do. Um, if we could go to agenda item number one, the Poet Laureate Committee update. Uh, Mr. Carroll, if you can kind of lead us on this. Yes, uh, thank you Matt, very much, Madam Chair. Um, as, as you know, um, the, um, this board did uh, endorse a warrant article um, two years ago to uh, create an honorary position Poet Laureate in the town of Arlington. Um, we put forward a warrant article, it was accepted by town meeting to create um, not only the position, but also an appointing body. Um, the program's been incredibly successful. I've, I've heard from um, numerous people in the community, including our library director, has said that the, the uh, office hours, for example, have uh, just people lined up waiting to come in and meet with the um, Poet Laureate. The committee that was established uh, from numerous uh, appointing boards at that time, um, they um, <clears throat> have been interested in being uh, active on an ongoing basis, not just the appointment process. And if it's possible, I'd like to um, introduce Liza Halley, who is the uh, chair of the uh, of the Poet Laureate. Um, is currently the appointment committee, a screening committee, uh, to kind of talk a little bit more about what what they had in mind. Hi. Um, thank you very much for ha letting me speak today on behalf of the Poet Laureate Committee. Um, besides myself, uh, we have John Burt, our secretary, Jane Howard, who's here with me, and Pamela Powell on the committee. And we want to thank you very, very much for even establishing the committee. It's really been a, an honor to be part of it. Um, we're, to date, we created the process of choosing the Poet Laureate. We solicited the applications, recommended the amazing Miriam Levine to serve as the Poet Laureate, and we've striven to advocate and support her in her role. Um, we're extremely happy with Miriam Levine's activities as Poet Laureate and seek to facilitate what she does in any way that we can. Because of our work, she's been able to establish the office hours at the library, as Joe was talking about, which have been really busy, um, give a reading a town day, offer a number of workshops at the senior center, make many visits to schools and other organizations more broadly, and she established an Arlington Poetry Prize contest, which received more than 300 submissions from local poets, and she also organized a ceremony to celebrate the winner. Um, she raised the profile of poetry in Arlington with articles in The Advocate and other local media. I'm here today to let you all know that the Poet Laureate Committee supports the suggestion of Doug Heim, the town council, that we would continue as an advisory committee to the selectmen to support the laureate. Rather than serve only as a selection committee, we believe that as advisors to the selectmen and as resources and advocates for the laureate, the Poet Laureate will have more support. As advisors, we would advocate for the town to find a way to remunerate the Poet Laureate as other towns in the region do, and we really want this position to be sustainable in the future, and we believe that this will be an important factor in making it so. So that's why I'm here, just to sort of confirm this idea that we would really like to be, remain as an advisory committee instead of sort of going under and, and then waiting until the position turns over and we find another Poet Laureate. So, thank you. Uh, before I call Mr. Kiro, Attorney Heim, is there anything? that you'd like to say, or was it pretty much covered? I, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, the, the, the basics of this are, are pretty straightforward. There's no reason that a, a committee of town meeting meant to es establish to appoint a poet laureate can't also remain in an advisory capacity for the selectmen and broaden their role and responsibilities so long as there are certain things that remain vested within the selectmen to do. So this would be something that would be a selectman committee versus we don't have to go back to town meeting, or should we? I don't think that you would have to go to, back to town meeting. You certainly could go back to town meeting to revise their um, uh, charge uh, pursuant to town meeting. I just don't think it's necessary because they'll still have that duty when the Poet Laureate's term expires uh, as a, a creation of town meeting, but they can also serve in this capacity for the selectmen. Okay. If I could, right before I call on Mr. Kiro, if you could just, um, through the town manager, town council, if there's any sort of report or update that we should give to town meeting in terms of 
um, we sort mm -hmm. of have changed the status of this committee just to let them all know. Uh, or if that's not necessary, that's fine too. But Mr. Carroll? Uh, thank you very much. I think to give a little bit more context, I think the, the, some of the committee members had approached me and asked if there was a way to, to formalize kind of an ongoing role, especially in, in helping to do, um, uh, you know, fundraising for programs and, 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 and such. Um, I have a motion before me that I'd like to offer that Doug did help to, to, to draft, and I, I think essentially what it, what it amounts to is that, that the same group of individuals have two hats. I think probably legally it's two committees, but it, but in practice it's one. Um, so if if I might, I'd like to offer the motion. Uh, I move as follows: um, uh, that we first establish a poet laureate advisory committee as a committee to the selectmen charged with serving as a liaison between the selectmen and our appointed poet laureate, requesting and recommending works, readings, and other artistic contributions to the poet laureate and the board of selectmen, and advising the selectmen on the disbursement of honoraria or other similar funds for programming and activities of the Poet Laureate through available town gift funds. And two, second, uh, appoint the members of the screening committee for the Poet Laureate as organized by the vote of the 2014 town meeting and town bylaws title two article 11 to serve as the Poet Laureate advisory committee for a term consistent with article 11. Second. second by Mr. Carroll, second and by Mr. Byrne. Um, any further discussion? <coughs> um, if you haven't already, if you could just email to Mrs. Kropelka sure. that motion. I, I saw her writing fervently, but I'm sure she had it. Yeah. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we will go to agenda item two, minutes of the meeting for December 21st, 2015. Is there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Three, we have reappointments. Uh, reappointment for the Arlington Historic Districts Commission. Um, Jade Cummings, term to expire July 31st, 2017. Is there a motion? We, we also have uh, several others there too. Still under the reappointments heading. Where's that? Oh, Actually, I'm sorry. I jumped over. Let me go back to agenda item three. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Kiro. We have reappointments for the <coughs> Board of Health, Kenneth Kohlberg, Board of Library Trustees, Adam DeMolino, Francis Murphy, Commission on Arts and Culture, Adri Adria Och, Barbara Costa, Commission on Disabilities, Maureen St. Hilier, Historic Commission, Patrick Guthrie, Open Space Commission, Jane Auger, all terms to expire January 31st, 2019. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Byrne. Second. Seconded by Mr. Curo. Um, I do see Mr. Kohlberg here. Is there anybody else here? Um, if you both want to come up since you came to the microphone, if just for everybody at home, if you could just say your name, the committee you're reappointed to, and um, any relevant information you'd like to pass on. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Kenneth Kohlberg. I'm with the Board of Health. And I'm here only to say thank you. I'm uh, very pleased to be uh, reappointed. My first term has been wonderful. I enjoyed the three years very much. I'm looking forward to the next term. It's my privilege to um, uh, help advance the public health of the people of Arlington. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Well, we're going to take a vote, but you yeah. can stay. <laughs> Good evening. Hi, my name is Adam Del Molino, and I just wanted to thank the uh, the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager um, for working together and uh, appreciate uh, your consideration for reappointment to the Board of Library Trustees. Um, I've recently become the Chair of the Board of Library Trust Trustees. Congratulations. We really uh, appreciate all of your work and support on, on behalf of libraries here in Arlington. We really appreciate the partnership with you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, yeah. gentlemen, for showing yeah. up. Mr. Dunn? Uh, just, I think you, you may have gotten the order wrong because I think we're supposed to thank you. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we say this to volunteers who come up, you know, you guys, uh, um, we run, the town does what it does because of volunteers and paid employees, but volunteers are very important. And so we appreciate all the time and effort that you put into it. Thank you. And right before we take the vote by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Kira, I want to thank you, Mr. Carroll, for pointing out that my eyes had jumped ahead. Um, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank unanimous you. vote. Thank you so much. And thank you to the other um, reappointments. Uh, now agenda item four, reappointment Arlington Historic Districts Commission of Jade Cummings, term to expire July 31st, 2017. Is there a motion? So moved. 
Moved by Mr. Second. Don, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Uh, I'm not sure if Jade is here. If not, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, and I know the next person's here because I can see the gentleman. Um, now we have request, American Legion change of manager. Um, summary submitted by uh, William Yorker McCarthy, manager. Mr. McCarthy. An old, but not old, a <laughs> familiar, <laughs> a familiar face. Hello, nice to see you all again. Nice to see you. Um, if you could just say briefly in one sentence for anybody watching at home, just exactly what this is. It's a. I'm here for appointment as manager of the American Legion. Uh, 370 Mass Ave. Uh, we're a veterans organization. We run to operate to you know support veterans, veterans causes, and uh, helping the community wherever we can towards any community causes, community, state, national. Thank you. Is there a motion? Move approval. By Second. Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. <coughs> For the few who don't know, um, Mr. McCarthy was our former vet veteran service agent, director, um, did an exemplary job and passed that office on to our current um, person who's covering that. So it's, it's good to see your face in a different capacity. Saying? And you look fantastic. Everyone Thank you. looks fantastic. Uh, <laughs> many further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Mm -hmm. Unanimous vote. Good to see you again. Good to see you all, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. We now have um, agenda item six. No, citizens. Oh, citizens. Oh, my God. Look, at, I, I'm so quick. It's a good thing I have uh, Mr. Kiro here. Uh, agenda, my, agenda item six. Before we get there, citizens open forum. I'm not sure if anybody signed, signed in. in. Nobody yeah. signed in, so I won't do the preamble of what citizens open forum is. And now I'll go, I promise I think I'm gonna do okay for the rest of the night, because there's only four more agenda items. <laughs> Six, Cyrus Dallin Art Museum. Um, we have reference material regarding an update and um, two approvals. I'm not sure, Mr. Manager, if you wanna say anything first, or should I call upon the representatives from the Cyrus Dallin Committee? Thank you. I'm Heather LaBelle from the Dallin Museum, and Gary Trembley is here with me tonight as well. Just wanted to update you on the restoration of the Jefferson Cutter House. So as, as you know that the Dallin Museum, the nonprofit wing of the museum is really very committed to um, you know, helping secure funding for the restoration of the house and helping guide the town with the restoration of the house. So we did identify the um, Mass Historical Commission as a potential source of funds, the Preservation Projects Fund. And um, that's basically, it's state money. It's a, a, a grant program administered by the Historical Commission. It's for historic properties, landscapes, and cultural assets um, that are on the State Register of Historic Places. And so we applied. I worked with Carol Kowalski and Patrick Guthrie, who is one of our advisors at the museum. And we received $65,000. We figured that that would be a great way to sort of match, supplement the capital funds that the town had already allocated for the property. So I have the, let's see, the scope of work. And also, <coughs> I just wanted to, to step back a bit and say that this process has been about two years in coming because a couple, last year, I think I came and I told you about the conservation assessment that we had. Um, the nonprofit had worked with an architect to have, to have her identify and prioritize some of the conservation and restoration issues on the property. And that report that she wrote for us formed the basis of the historical commission, the, um, the Pre preservation projects fund grant. And we wouldn't have gotten it without that first. So it's, it's kind of, this is, the, this is how we hoped it would work out. So we got this recent grant, um, 65,000. It's going to be matched by a combination of CDBG money, I believe, and capital funds for the house. The bid um, package was uh, announced uh, in December. It was advertised for three weeks. The bids closed January 5th. We received three bids, and we're in the process. Ted Fields has been managing the process for the town now. And we're just evaluating the contractors and should make a decision soon. Um, what else to tell you? So the scope of work will be the replacement of the roof, repair and replacement of the roof drainage systems, repair of the exterior woodwork, restoration of the windows and doors, and exterior painting. Part of that, too, is a paint exterior paint analysis, which will determine we probably will be able to go with a different color. Wouldn't have been white. Um, historically, so maybe not far, like stone colored or cream or something like that. But it'll be a very nice 
finish to the project to have a new coat of paint mm. put on the house. And if it's got a little bit of color to it, it'll, it'll pop and really uh, stand out in the, in the park. Um, so we hope that as soon as the weather breaks, we'll be able to start work. So it's sometime in March. The work has to be wrapped up by the end of June. And there are going to be some issues, I think, with contractors' access to the property. So they're, they're supposed to um, not um, take up too much space in the park around the, the house. But they may need some parking spaces um, for their trucks and some space in the roadway there that I'll come at another time with a map. I don't have, uh, Ted's gonna help me with pictures and maps to show you kind of what we think might, might work for that, but <coughs> that, that'll be maybe our next meeting. We can go over that with you, the access issues. So does anyone have any? Mr. Dunn, questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Good to hear. Uh, the bids came in roughly where you'd hope? Um, they were high, but um, that I guess from what Patrick Guthrie says, that's pretty typical of the public mm -hmm. bidding process. The lowest bid was 170. So the, so the um, we were thinking 130, 140, but 170 came from Alson. And they are presently working on Maple Street property, and they're doing a pretty good job. So we're checking their references and... Um, and Ted is pretty confident that we can make up that difference in CDB, with CDBG money. Okay. <coughs> and, um, why does it have to be done by the end of June? It's the grant program dictates the, so it's gotta be done by the end of the state's fiscal year. Okay, and uh, maybe, I don't know, is, is, is the permanent town building committee also involved in this process as well in some way, or are they, is it just totally separate? The, uh, the, Permanent Town Building Committee? That, that may be um, a good question for Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I've been just working with Ted at Community Development yeah. and Planning. You know, so they're not, but um, I think it would be worthwhile to have a conversation with John Cole to see if he thinks it would fit. I think just, yeah, let's make sure they know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, my only question, comment, um, would be, because perhaps at the next presentation, unless you know right now off the top of your head, thinking of when the farmer's market opens, um, mm -hmm. in this project in the area that's located. Right. Do you know Good or point. do you have a, an idea when in when you say end of June, do you literally mean the end of June for the project? Yeah. Do you have a date or will you tell us at your next we, update? Yes, we'll have a better idea once we select the contractor and we sit down and work out the project timeline with them because they, part of the contract <coughs> stipulates that they really, they can't um, interfere too much with our regular operations. So I think the farmer's market probably should fit into that as well. So. Um, so we hope that it's done way before the end of, it's a small house. I don't think it should take that long to, to do all of the work. Um, so if we start as early as we can in March, as soon as the weather breaks, hopefully it will, you know, may take, I don't know, I'm hoping a month. Um, so, but we'll update you as we go along and we and, figure out And that's out fine, the if you do timeline. see that the project's going later into June, I yeah. assume working with the town manager's office planning department, sort of have a backup and or let the contractors, yeah. subcontractors know. I'm assuming the tail end of the project won't be as intensive as the beginning. So right, there may move. not be that much parking, but I'll leave that at the next meeting when you come in with Mr. Fields and anything from the town manager. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, Mr. Thank Byrne. Um, thinking about the parking, it might make sense for the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee to kind of take a, take a look at it even you know before we come back to the next selectmen's meeting. If, um, it might be good for us to have some eyes on it because we're kind of looking at the lot and how the center works in general. So I'd be happy to you know, relay that to the committee and kind of dive into it. Okay. Can, why don't we formalize that and take that as a motion to refer to the parking implementation, implementation and governance committee. governance committee by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Carroll. Uh, on this particular item, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank so, you, Mr. So Burns. if you uh, want to send the plan, any plans they have to Adam, I think that we yeah. can kind of work it out in the committee. Yeah. I can, I can connect with Ted Fields as well. Perfect. Okay, so what, what um, we're thinking when we have a better idea of yeah. what we know we're doing. Okay, just mm -hmm. talk to I'll okay. leave it to Mr. Byrne when appropriate to I'll be report happy back to report that. Yeah. And okay. then uh, I believe you have a second part okay, concerning yeah. two events in July and August. Yep, so we, the, we'd we like to have host a celebration, the nonprofit would like to host a celebration at the completion, well, in August actually, um, to give us some time to plan for the completion of the restoration of the house. And so we 
wanted to reserve the park for that date, which is Sunday, August 7th. Mm -hmm. And then we have a rain date of August 14th, the following Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we also would like to involve the town and everyone who helped you know, make this program um, make the project such a success. And I'd like to kind of be in dialogue with you all about that as we get closer to the, to the event. That's okay. Awesome. And do you want to, in one motion, also um, incorporate the Saturday, July 23rd? Yes, yeah, so then the other date was Saturday, July 23rd for um, a free family performance by the River Creek String Band. And we're not quite sure on the timing of that, so we were hoping to just have the park for the whole day. Whole day meaning 7A um, to 7P, 9A to Yeah, it'll be a family affair so no later than so let's say seven to seven that would be great if we could well, we don't we say need it, right now seven to, to seven and if things should change if you could just um okay. let the selectman's office and the town manager know uh so a motion <coughs> for the august 7th event with the rain date of august 14th as well as the july 23rd event moved by so moved mr Kiro, seconded by second mr dunn any further discussion if not all those in favor say aye aye uh, those opposed Unanimous vote. Thank you so okay, much for everything you. that you have on your plate. Oh, that's, that's no right problem. Here. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Agenda item seven, Arlington Conservation Committee. An update regarding a sign installation at Great Meadows as well as a request. Um, I see Mr. White is here. Hello, I'm David White from the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. And we have two items tonight. One is a report in the Cross Lexington Trails program. Um, this program is a program to get people out, outside and walking more in the outdoor areas. The first step of this program was two loops, A and B, in central Lexington about three years ago. In 2014, they wanted to extend this program to create two loops in east Lexington, C and D loops. Those loops would include parts of Arlington's Great Meadows and parts of Arlington's Reservoir. They asked us for permission to do that, and we, the selectmen agreed to that with some conditions that they identify which land was owned by the town of Arlington. That project is now completed. The, um, signs are in place. The maps are available showing those new trails. Copies there for you. And I've seen actually people you now walking from the reservoir to Great Meadows, walking from Hoople Hill to the reservoir. So really it's connecting parts of lands we own with parts, other parts of Lexington. So it's encouraged a lot of walking activities there. Um, the next item regards the um, invasive aquatic plants at the <coughs> reservoir. Um, you may be aware that every year, Arlington spends about $20,000 to harvest water chestnut plants from the reservoir. Um, actually, half of the reservoir is actually in the town of Lexington. <laughs> we. <coughs> Nathaniel Stevens and I, several years ago, asked the Lexington Conservation Commission for some contributions to support this effort. The Conservation Commission in Lexington recommended $10,000 to support that harvesting effort, but that proposal did not um, die further up in the Lexington oh, <laughs> government. I won't write it down then, I'm sorry. Write it down. <laughs> so we are coming back again to ask the selectmen this town to ask the selectmen of Lexington to contribute towards aquatic plant harvesting at the reservoir. Currently, that's funded by the Arlington Water Bodies Fund, and we'd like to like, encourage a contribution for that effort since it is half in Lexington, and people in Lexington use the reservoir, and they have a park next to the reservoir. Uh, Mr. Manager, did you have? Yeah, so I, I'll chime in. This was before the board. Um, was it back in 2014 or 2013? August, August 14. And, and probably before, another time before that as well. Um, in follow-up to that, uh, I believe we had talked about uh, at one point a letter, but I had a follow-up conversation with the town manager um, who I 
otherwise get along with swimmingly. Uh, uh, Swimming. And uh, he, he explained that there was just, I mean, even, even though it's a small amount of money, just a very um, sort of fundamental dispute with, with funding this. Um, I don't feel that I agree with it. I, what I would suggest the board um, authorized me to do is start perhaps with a conversation with our um, recently departed uh, from Arlington, Carol Kowalski, who now has a, an important job in Lexington, <laughs> see if she might be able to uh, <laughs> now. give us, give us, a, maybe give us a little intel and help us uh, understand what's happening there, and then pivot from there in terms of sending a formal letter or a continuing informal conversation. I'll move the manager's recommendation. Yeah. By Mr. Byrne, seconded by. Second. Mr. Dunn, um, any further discussion? Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kiro. Yeah, just as uh, I definitely think we should keep asking, yep. but I agree that uh, it's not the it, it, you know it's not the battle that we're gonna you know go to war with Lexington over. Yeah. So, but I mean we, we should just keep telling them. You know we think the, we think it's fair that you should pay, and someday we'll get there. Mr. Kiro. Thank you. And I was said by the guy who's been battling with all sorts of towns. Like, <laughs> 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 the town battler. No, no. <laughs> Um, I, I am just curious, I mean, beyond the, the issue of fiscal, you know, equity and sharing the costs with Lexington, if they were to, um, to actually share part of that burden, would you see that we would have, what else would you see us having capacity to do with the, the town water bodies fund that we can't currently achieve? Well, I think if Lexington comes through with some pull, we could probably reduce the to some degree, our water bodies fund request. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. I mean, I just want to note also that basically we pay $20,000 for the contractor, but the Arlington DPW also does additional work as well as part of the supporting the effort. So there's more than just the $20,000 cost involved. Uh -huh. Does the DPW cross over into Lexington territory? I think they, I, I I think think they so. collect it all from the, uh, the Arlington uh, Shore side. Uh, Shore side. A bill. <laughs> the Arlington side, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Dunn to authorize the town manager to have conversations with the specified Lexington town employee and or any other employees um, that he, he deems appropriate. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thanks, David. Okay. I encourage people also to explore the trails next to the reservoir and Great Meadows. Thank you. And signs are up there. And if you have any extra of those, if you want to leave them with the selectman's office, you can put them as people come in, and or if you want to give some to the town manager's office or whomever else. And thank you for all your work on that. <clears throat> thank you so much. Um, agenda item eight, the community choice aggregation, warrant article request, if I could ask the town manager to sort of give us a prelude and then call upon the proponents. Yeah. So in, uh, as a matter of brief introduction, uh, this warrant article request is about community choice aggregation. And um, the folks from Mothers Out Front will get into this in greater detail, but this is essentially an issue that would need to be approved by town meeting, by which not the town government, but the entire population of the town would be able to bulk purchase electricity and if they choose, also buy a greater degree of green or renewable energy than they would be able to buy from Eversource. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a process that you can go through working with a consultant to actually aggregate your usage, uh, to go out, get a competitive price, allow residents uh, to actually, all residents would be part of it, but then they'd have the ability to opt out. Um, so with that, I don't want to get ahead of them. Um, I don't want to step on your if tongue. I could ask if Whoever would like to speak to this, if you could come up to the microphone and just say your name and go from there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us to speak to you about the warrant article we're proposing to engage a broker for Arlington search for a greener, more affordable alternative electricity supplier. I'm Carol Saunders Chamberlain, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Ann Goodwin, Ann Wright, and Krista Kelleher from Mothers Out Front. Erin Taylor is also here, both as a Mothers Out Front member and as a representative of the Mass Energy Consumers Alliance. Mothers Out Front works throughout Massachusetts toward a livable climate for all children, now and in the future. We are building a town-wide coalition to support this Warren article, which currently includes Sustainable Arlington, 
the town's energy working group, and the Massachusetts Climate Action Network. I'd also like to acknowledge Ryan Katowski, who is Sustainable Arlington's representative on the CCA project, and who helped us craft the article and comments. Ryan, Aaron Taylor, and I are also members of the town's energy working group. We are proposing a warrant article because green community choice aggregation seems to be the fastest way both to quickly reduce our town's use of fossil fuels and to promote the development of renewable forms of electricity generation. Several neighboring towns, including Brookline, Lexington, Cambridge, Dedham, and Melrose, are pursuing green CCAs. Organizations like the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and the Mass Energy Consumers Alliance are supporting the development of green CCAs. We've supplied you with a packet of information on the topic, and we'll be happy to answer your questions at the, after our 10-minute presentation. And in general, this will follow the PowerPoint that you received um, copies of in your packet. So what is CCA? CCA, or Community Choice Aggregation, is a process by which local governments can seek proposals for cleaner and cheaper sources of power on behalf of residents and businesses. It is outlined in the Massachusetts Restructuring Act of 1997, Chapter 164, Section 134. In some areas, such as a very large CCA in the Cape Cod area, CCAs have been done simply for local control and cost control reasons. We are looking for an alternative provider that will both keep costs roughly the same as, or cheaper than, Eversource, but also increase the amount of renewable energy used to generate our electricity. And even with increased renewable energy, by consolidating residential and commercial retail electricity demand, CCA has the potential to help Arlington residents and businesses <coughs> save money. So, how does the CCA work? Instead of Eversource basic service, Arlington selects a new default electricity supplier for residents and businesses over a set period of time. When you look at your electricity bill, you will see a supplier services section. This is where we would see the name of our CCA supplier and the price per kilowatt hour we would have negotiated for Arlington residents and businesses. We would still get our electric bills from Eversource. All residents and businesses currently on basic service will be switched to this new supplier and given this price. There are some really tangible benefits to customers of a, of a CCA. There is no cost to the town, but there is local control over prices. More stable prices and probable savings compared to Eversource basic service over time. And purchasing more local energy puts money back into New England economies. Participation is optional. Arlington residents and businesses do have a choice. They can opt out without penalty. They can choose to opt up and support more renewable energy. They will not be automatically opted in if they have already chosen an alternative supplier. But one of the most important benefits is that a CCA can help Arlington support more renewable energy, thereby reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which are creating the dangerous scenario of climate change. Through CCA, ratepayers support more renewable energy from Class I New England sources. Class I renewable energy is energy that is generated in New England from projects built since 1997. It is designated through specific guidelines in the Massachusetts Renewable Portfolio Standard, or RPS. Melrose, Dedham, and Salem have been able to include 5% more Class I renewable energy than is currently required by the RPS and still keep prices competitive with Eversource Basic Service. A CCA with increased Class I renewable energy content can help Arlington and Massachusetts transition to a cleaner, more efficient energy supply. And by increasing renewable energy in our electricity supply, Arlington is complying with a state mandate, the Global Warming Solutions Act, in order to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. So why is buying Class I renewable energy so important? Because it is the best way to put money back into the local economy 
and it results in the development of more renewable energy. It may surprise you, but not all renewable energy purchases actually make this happen. The Metropolitan Area Planning Council, or MAPC, has selected a CCA broker through a request for proposals process. Any community in MAPC service territory can use this broker. The broker's job is to help a community get a supplier that can provide the price and product it wants for its CCA. This fall, Arlington sat on the selection committee for the MAPC broker selection process. The committee selected Good Energy. The fact that Good Energy has been pre-qualified and that Arlington had a major role in choosing it helps in a number of ways. It can save Arlington time and it ensures that the broker is a good fit for Arlington's needs. Other participants in the MAPC procurement process were Somerville, Sudbury, and Newton. So here is how the process of CCA would work from here on. This process, the process outlined here was developed by the state. First, we need to get town meeting approval to retain a broker and begin. We could retain Good Energy, the MAPC selected and pre-qualified broker. Good Energy develops an aggregation plan with Arlington. The plan is reviewed and approved by the Board of Selectmen, then reviewed and approved by the Attorney, Attorney General, the DOER, and the DPU. When the plan is approved by all of the above, Good Energy would issue an RFP for a competitive supplier. Then the town chooses a competitive supplier. The supplier helps with the public education before launching the CCA. It is really important to understand that there is no obligation to proceed at any time and no cost to anyone until the supplier is selected and the plan is set in motion. The only commission the broker takes is included in the price per kilowatt hour that electricity consumers pay on their bills. We've been told that a standard fee is a tenth of a penny per kilowatt hour. Remember that we would still end up with a rate that includes this fee and averages out to be competitive or cheaper than Eversource's basic service price. Arlington is doing great work and can do more to contribute to state, national, international re emission reduction goals. The State Global Warming Solution Act and the National New Energy for America Plan emission reduction goals are as follows. 25% reduction by 2020, which is a state goal, 80% reduction by 2050, which is a goal of both. CCA accelerates our progress toward these goals. Our warrant article is being submitted to you today by the town manager on behalf of the Energy Working Group. However, if the board would like to sponsor the article, all parties involved would be more than happy to accept. In the town of Brookline, where CCA is being pursued, the Board of Selectmen sponsored the CCA article. There is more information about Brookline's articles and votes in your packet. Here is the text of our warrant article. To see if the town will authorize the Board of Selectmen to commence a community choice aggregation program and contract for electric supply as authorized by MGL 164, section 134, and through CCA, decrease greenhouse gas emissions from the generation of electricity for Arlington residents and businesses by pursuing an increased amount of class one designated renewable energy than is required by the Massachusetts Renewable Portfolio Standard or to take any other action relative thereto. In summary, we're enthusiastic about the possibility of a CCA in Arlington. As you can see in append the Appendix A in your packet, many other communities are looking into or doing similar CCAs. A CCA would be an efficient way for our town to contribute to the state's goal of reducing emissions by 25% over 1990 <coughs> levels by 2020 and 80% by 2050. We are aware from energy working group members and other energy experts 
that if we continue as we have been over the last few years, the state will not meet its emission <laughs> reduction goals. I think we have all seen recently that there is a serious commitment on the part of many internationally to avert climate disaster through efficiency, demand reduction, and greening the grid. But this doesn't happen easily or automatically. It will require local action like CCAs. We are proud of Arlington's commitment to additional solar energy, energy efficiency, and other important steps taken in the past few years. And we hope that the Board of Selectmen and the town meeting will support CCA as a critical next step. Thank you. And now we are happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Um, and I know you've done a lot of outreach also um, uh, throughout the, the town on this. Um, I really appreciated the, the packet of material you provided. I did have one question, and it appears in the, the warrant article um, language itself. You, you talked a lot about the class one uh, renewable energy. What constitutes class one for um, uh, a class one designated renewable energy? Yes. Uh, Aaron. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, Aaron E.T., if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> Class one renewable energy is designated by the state renewable portfolio standard. And it actually, in the in this standard, it yeah. lists specific types of uh, generators that could qualify, like wind, solar. There's a list of them. Yeah. And then it also requires that this renewable energy source needs to be built uh, since 1990, so after 1997. Okay. So those are pretty much the main qualifiers for class one renewable and energy. Local. And it needs to be in New England. Okay. In, in the New England power grid region. Great, thank you. Um, you, you mentioned that um, good energy was uh, pre-qualified. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we were pre-qualified with good energy. <coughs> um, and that they would be responsible for issuing, issuing an RFP to identify a competitive supplier, but then the, the town itself actually designates that competitive supplier and I don't know if the question is to you or to town council or the manager who, who actually in the town in this case um, makes that that final selection and 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 signs off on the competitive su suppliers at this board or is it the manager or you know we I think we have to research that but I would I think it would be the board you think it would be the board yeah okay great and I was also wondering if you, and I think this is for the manager also, if you could talk just a little bit about the MAPC process that we, that we sat on. Was that initiated from the energy working group or the, our well, now our facilities director, but our energy director, or um, if you could talk a little bit about how we uh, became involved with the. Yeah, so we became aware that MAPC was gonna be pursuing uh, a collective procurement to be able to identify a consultant or consultants <clears throat> to work on community choice aggregation uh, and meeting with the energy working group with mothers out front at the table we decided that uh, even though we'd be eligible to be part of it just being in the M uh, MAPC catchment area uh, that given our interest in it we should have someone at the table helping to screen the consultants so we actually had Eve Margolis the management analyst okay. in the town manager's office attend uh, a number of meetings to go through the selection process go through the criteria actually even help draft the RFP um, again wanting to have as much input as possible a lot of input from mothers out front from ryan from sustainable arlington so we we tried to have as much of a fingerprint as we reasonably could on the selection process great great well, thank you very much um I, I have to say that that you know first blush i mean we we look at all of the debates on the international stage and the, the federal stage and I, I feel like uh approaches like this just drive home again that at the end of the day it's probably going to be municipalities and states that have much more direct um impact um, in, in trying to combat um, <clears throat> climate, the impacts of climate change. Um, I also have to say, just, just as my role on, on, on this board and some of our recent experience with um, cable contracts, that when I look at this and something like community choice aggregation, <clears throat> it feels like we actually can make an impact here in a way that we can't do after going through that whole process with you know, listening to uh, the cable companies present, and then we can't impact the package they offer or the, the choices that are offered to the consumers. We can't impact um, the, the prices at all. And um, I, the beauty of this, when I, when I compare that, um, 
you know, as a utility is that we actually can make some positive impacts here. So I'm, I'm really glad that you've brought it forward and the managers brought it forward. Um, I'd like to hear what my other colleagues have to say, but um, I'm, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this. Mr. Byrne? Yes, no, I am. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Kiro. Um, one, I'd like to thank everyone for all their work on this. I know this was, um, you know, a long endeavor. I know that we've met, um, you met with board members individually, and um, it, it was a great learning experience for me. Um, and, and I will, I, I'm happy to, you know, support this as well, I think, for two, for two main reasons. Uh, the first is, as was, you know, touched upon several times, was just the debate that's going on um, locally all the way, you know, up to the international level. And I think that when we look at clean energy resources, we have to, you know, make them as available as possible. And I think this is a, um, you know, one main way to do this. And um, secondly, I, I really like that it's an option. Um, you know, we're not forcing this down anyone's throat. It is, you know, a simple opt-in or opt-out, and I think um, that that makes it, you know, very easy to implement and, you know, just a, a common sense way of moving forward. So. I am, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to move forward um, in any way that the board uh, sees fit, but I, I, I look forward to supporting this. Mr. Dunn? Uh, in 2002, I think it was, I was appointed to the first committee I was ever appointed to in Arlington, which was the Arlington Power Municipalization Committee, <laughs> which was created because NSTAR couldn't keep the lights on. And, uh, and so the, we were having so many outages, we were calling Arlington the third world country, which I'm sure many people remember. And uh, we looked at both municipalization at the time and aggregation. And uh, at the time we weren't, we, we issued a few different reports to town meeting, but we weren't ready to, uh, to set to recommend it. But uh, I could definitely, cons it, it seems to me that this presentation is a lot more mature than the conversations we were having then, and uh, it looks it's an idea that I, can, that I could support. I think towards the very specific question they have about whether or not the selectmen should be um, sponsors of this, um, I'm actually happy to leave it as a town manager. We still get to weigh in as to whether or not it's a, a yes or a no, um, but I actually I like the fact that it's being brought forward by the groups that it's being brought forward by, and I think that... Uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, frankly, I just think it'll do better town meeting that way. Okay, um, just to sort of encapsulate and not, try not to repeat, um, I agree with, in terms of when you sponsor a Warren article, you've sort of lived, breathed, and worked and evolved with um, the specific issue. And we have received many emails, information in our packet. The town manager and the mothers out front have been very accommodating about getting us the information. Um, but I, I'm in agreement with, with what I think I'm hearing, that um, this be a Warren article sponsored by the town manager and mothers out front with support, unanimous or not, but I think I can see where we're going, um, by the Board of Selectmen. I just have sort of um, one question, just because, and if you tell me, stop right there, we just included Brookline to, you know, uh, give you an example. What I'm looking at is um, where the actual funding from this comes, the way I read the um, Warren article and vote by the Brookline uh, Board of Selectmen. It basically says that the residents have an option to contribute monies, an average of $7 per month. Um, so my question would be, would that be the sim similar vehicle here in Arlington? Residents would have an option for whatever the average is and um, exactly how we anticipate that working, or am I, am I going off, Mr. <coughs> Town Manager? Um, so what that, um, what that particular $7 reference to would be if residents wanted to buy more green electricity. Oh, okay. So it doesn't actually fund CCA or Community Choice Aggregation, it funds a choice to purchase a higher level okay. of renewable energy. And the actual funding is from? Yeah, I mean, as far as I see this, there shouldn't be, um, any traditional taxpayer dollars spent on this effort, other other than town staff time, you know, dedicated to That's working great. on it. That's great. And I, I only ask that question because I'm thinking CPA, oh, a, yeah. a pos yeah. possible debt override, high school Minuteman, middle school elementary. So when I saw that from Brooklyn, so um, That's a good question. I, I think what I'm hearing from my colleagues, it may be a motion of support of the uh, Warren article submitted by the town manager and mothers out front, moved by, or someone wants to amend that. Madam Chairwoman, can I? Mm -hmm. Clarifying question. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm following this. 
I, my understanding is that Mr. Byrne and Mr. Curo are suggesting that they're maybe amenable to this article coming from the selectmen, whereas you and Mr. Dunn, it appears they're suggesting that they're, you're happy for this to come from the town manager and, um, and these private groups, uh, and that at a Warren article hearing later, there would be some expression of support on a positive Recommendation. Am I misunderstanding? Well, I'll wait to hear a motion because I heard support four times. Yeah, well, I, I definitely. I, I was, you know, willing to. I wanted to hear out the discussion. I wasn't saying that the board should do it. Okay, uh, we should recommend it. Okay, so, Mr. Kiro. Yeah, and I think I'm wait, on board. No, that's it. Okay. Perfect. I, I think my view is. I, I. It seems that the board is very uh, supportive here, but I think it, in some ways it hold it carries more gravitas if it mm -hmm. take, comes from the manager and comes from the energy working group who have been working directly on these issues for, for so long. Um, it, it's also important, I think, that we, I think the proponents recognize that it, the procedural nature of town meeting means that we are going to have to come back here on a, on a formal hearing mm -hmm. for this that will be, um, you know, open to, you know, anyone who wants to speak pro or con. And, and at that point, this board would take a, a vote of a, an official recommendation to town meeting for them to vote on. Okay. I think we can. I think the sentiment here is pretty clear. Mm. All right. So um, it seems like we're maybe we should uh, entertain a motion to receive the um, so report and presentation by the manager and proponents by Mr. Kiro, seconded second. by Mr. Byrne. And I only say that because we're going to take a vote when we have the actual warrant and article hearing. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much for your presentation you. and the packet Thank materials. You. You. And fortunately or unfortunately, you'll be seeing us again. Yeah. <laughs> A few times. Fortunately. It depends. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Um, we will now go to agenda item nine, discussion, town manager evaluation process. Mr. Chaplin, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, let me start this by saying, uh, in response to Mr. Kiro, I can't imagine how I could have more gravitas than the Board of Selectmen. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I am. Oh, <laughs> that was a good, that, that was a softball. It's wasted because Wait, what, what category is that no. that he's fishing for? No, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Yeah. Um, well, what the Board has before them is uh, a memo that was loaded into Novus. Um, I had... Um, actually not loaded in the actual instrument the board has used in years past, but I provided a paper copy tonight. Uh, what, I'm, what I wanted to prompt tonight was uh, really just the start of the discussion. I provided a draft of a timeline uh, for submission of the narrative self-evaluation uh, by me on February 8th, uh, then allowing the board to review that self-evaluation and complete the evaluation instrument from February 8th to March 7th. On the 7th, um, uh, bringing those completed evaluation instruments to the chair of the board. Uh, then the chair would work with the HR director to compile the scores into that one consolidated or comprehensive document uh, from March 7th to March 16th. And then at the board's meeting of March 21st, uh, the evaluations could be discussed and, and voted on by the board in the public session. Mr. Dunn? Uh, move approval. I think this process has worked well for us. I think we take it seriously. I think it work, it, it, I think the feedback cycle has been helpful. Uh, I'm really happy to do it again. Uh, second. And um, yeah, this is one of my favorite meetings every year. Um, I think we get a lot out of it, so thank you. So the way I understand it is um, we'll have the self-evaluation, then the next sort of tickler date is March 7th for the chair to compile. Yeah, so what will um, happen You can just go is, through the dates again. I didn't yeah, write so on, on February 8th, I'll provide a narrative self-evaluation and an official blank copy of this evaluation instrument. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be asking board members over the course of that, uh, course of that month to review the evaluation that I draft, the self-evaluation, and complete this document to be <clears throat> transmitted to the chair on March 7th. On March 7th. And then between March 7th and the last date is March 23rd or 21st? Uh, it would be March 7 to 16. Mm -hmm. The 16, if I counted it out right, I believe is the Wednesday or Thursday before the 21st so that we could have it ready for the agenda uh, to be submitted, put it on the agenda on the 16th, and then have the board officially deliberate on it on March 21st. 21st. I wrote down the wrong date. That's, I'm sorry. That's why I was right. Okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, um, any further discussion or suggestions? I will say that I have um, availed myself with the current town manager and your predecessor that I usually have a 15, 20 minute meeting um, in terms of when I gather my thoughts. Um, and I That's plan helpful. on doing That's that again. Um, 
just as an FYI. Um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. We now have articles for review. Articles 6, 7, and 8 are pertinent to Minuteman Regional Vocational. I'm not sure if I should call on Mr. Dunn. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to go with it. Um, Article 6, bond authorization. Arguably, it's the Finance Committee that should be doing it, but just to cover bases, uh, they didn't actually make a recommendation. Um, I move no, that we recommend no action. A motion by Mr. Dunn of no action on Article 6, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne, um, any further discussion, Mr. Manager? Uh, only to add that, um, not to put words in Mr. Dunn's mouth, but no action today would be because there's nothing to act on. Yep. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Article 7. Article 7 is to let Wayland out because they requested to come out. And uh, this is actually a moot point because it requires unanimous consent in Lexington at least, if not others, have already voted it down. But Minuteman has asked us to vote on it. Um, I think we should uh, say no because we wouldn't, even in the... We're going to say yes to Article 8, I believe. In Article 7, uh, we would say no because we want Article 8. And so the, and the further defense is we're going to let Wayland out in the next article, so this is not the place to do it. So I move that we recommend no action um, because we need a, a better package in order to let uh, of, of changes, not just letting Wayland out. Second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Dunn of no action, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Mr. Chapdelaine, have um, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And now the much anticipated Article 8. Mr. Yeah, Dunn. so this is the big one. Yeah. This is, um, so we were here two years ago um, and we approved very, very similar text. It has changed in a few ways in the, um, that I'd outlined in a previous meeting uh, with us all. Um, there's a change in the capital um, that a little bit, so the, the capital apportionment is for one student as opposed to five student minimum, which is going to be <coughs> make some uh, smaller towns have more, perhaps more likely to stay in. Uh, it says that uh, effectively that Lincoln can leave if Lincoln chooses by, de by saying that the school doesn't have to be in a host community anymore. It says where it has to be, but it doesn't say it has to be, but you know, Lincoln can get out. Um, those are the changes since, uh, those are the, the significant changes since we voted uh, two years ago. What's also included, which we also agreed to uh, two years ago, significant changes to uh, operating uh, calculation, significant changes to capital appropriation, significant changes to the governance such that the committee is uh, weighted, and so we get a larger vote as opposed to just uh, one vote at the school, because we are obviously you know, a larger town. Uh, it also includes um, a, a couple interesting governance changes such that if we chose, and other towns chose, that the school committee member can be appointed by the board of selectmen as opposed to the moderator, which is not something that I necessarily con us, contemplate us doing, but it is uh, in there. Uh, all in all, this is the work of many, many years of many people, including Brian Sullivan and Adam and Al Tosti and Charlie Foskett and uh, who have been our negotiators at, at various point in time, Steve DeCorsi, the school committee members. Um, you know, the list of people who you have to thank to get this to here is very, very long. So all that said, I move that we recommend uh, the town meeting adopt this new <coughs> regional agreement. Second. Motion, move favorable action by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any questions? Um, just because I'm, Please. somewhat a, a novice at this. I understand I, I read through in terms of the weighted vote and how that would be calculated, computated, et cetera. I'm just wondering um, under the issue of, I'm not sure what it's under, uh, the apportionment uh, portion of capital costs. Mm -hmm. It speaks to um, capital costs prior to July 1st, 2016, as well as um, capital costs on or after July 1st of 2016. And then it outlines an additional funding vehicle of 
um, being afforded to the member communities regardless of student enrollment. So my question is, when we're talking about the apportionment of capital costs, um, the way that is to be determined is that our standing or status in our weighted vote category, or is so it something? So the, the voting calculation, like how much of a vote we get mm -hmm. and how much we pay in capital are different formulas. They're not the same formula. Is that where you're, it, okay. And that's, that's my question because yeah. I saw it as two separate yeah, things. Do we know at this point, I'm, I'm just thinking on behalf of Arlington, um, how we will be assessed or is that to be determined? It's, um, so the exact numbers, um, I'll look at Adam and see if I get the, but I, I think I can answer this one. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can. Um, I the, <laughs> so one of the elements that's, that's in this that I didn't mention in my earlier presentation, which I, I'm ha which I probably should have, is that there are a, a significant number of towns who may be leaving the district. And so in all 16 towns, hopefully Belmont is meeting, uh, Selectman is meeting tonight, and I believe that they will be the 16th town to schedule their t special town meeting. So at this point, and I think the latest town one is either February 23rd or February 28th or 24th, something like that. And so there are some towns who will be voting to leave the district. Wayland, for instance. We will not be a 16-person, 16-town 16 organization will be 15 when they leave, and there are a few others. And so the exact number of towns left is going to drive the exact calculations of um, both the voting and the capital. So I can't, uh, I can't give you an exact number. However, all the towns that are considering leaving are quite small, so the actual uh, contribution by each one of them is is relatively small. One of the things you mentioned there is the one percent. Mm -hmm. So every for, so for every town must pay at least one percent of the capital, which is a lot if you only send one or two students. It means you're paying a lot, and so that means that it's going to drive out some of those smaller towns for sure from that one percent. Which frankly is why I was willing to concede the five student minimum was because I knew that that 1% was there, that that was still gonna hang on to, to some of our money. So call it four towns are gonna leave. That's my best estimate. Could be five, I'd have to double check the, the list. Um, so that means that the 12% will come, if four towns leave, then then that'll, you know, there'll be 12 left, so those 12 will drive that 12%, plus there'll be some driven by student enrollment, plus there'll be some capital driven by wealth factor. And all of that is going to be what drives the actual capital number. Did that answer your question or not? It, it got me a, a little more clear. Okay. I guess what I would sort of follow up, um, is there any sort of caveat understanding after all the special town meetings, four to six cities or towns opt out? Yep. Um, then what we're left with in terms of member communities then when we talk about the apportioned capital costs as well as that 1%, whatever calculation, which you've, you've sort of outlined, but until we hear the results of the special town meeting, we really don't know. Um, are we, and I think the answer may be no, are we committing ourselves to a funding process and that's it, whether four to six communities opt out or not, or do we still have somewhere along the way that yeah, we are committing to absolutely no expenditures okay. in, with this vote. And in fact, we are, um, but with this, with the adoption of the regional agreement, we have more um, leverage to say no to future spending than we did under the old agreement. So to say it again, because it's really important, there is no <coughs> money being committed. There's no spending being done with this regional agreement. And it gives us more leverage if the district chose to do a project that we did not approve of. Okay. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, you know what, so s said another way, uh, I completely agree with everything Mr. Dunn has said. Said another way, uh, I think we've talked about it uh, at a prior board meeting, one thing the district has been considering is putting a question on the ballot to authorize an eventual school project without this agreement in place. We would be in a worse position if they did that and it was successful. So there's a lot of pro reasons to move this forward, but there's also a safety net reason to move this forward, to put us in a better governance system and in a better capital allocation formula should they put it on the ballot and be successful to do so. Yep. All right, 
Now I've got it all. Okay. Mr. Dunn. I just would say, and the other thing is, I'm, I don't know if you, uh, <laughs> Excuse me. in terms of understanding the capital and how that works, mm. way back, way down in the bottom of one of the sheets, it's page 24 uh, the, of the proposal or the stuff that came from Minuteman. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a photocopied. Um, mm. The cap and it says and at the title it says capital assessment model appendix yes. a mm -hmm. and so that top table describes how a million dollars of capital would be assessed so it's like a hypothetical million like what fraction would be paid by what towns mm -hmm. and you can see and at the top it's and so it says capital assessment model a appendix a then it says 50 percent enrollment 34 percent chapter 70 combined effort one percent each member capital base so that's the what it's telling you, do you see where I'm reading yeah, that from? Yeah, no, Okay, and so that's everything that, um, but you can imagine, and so right now next to Wayland, it says $23,000 of that million. And so you can cross a line through Wayland, hypothetically, mm -hmm. you know, they voted four times to leave, they're gonna vote again. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be, and the, that 23,000 will be, have to be made up by everybody else. And similarly, um, Dover might go, uh, Boxborough might go, Carlisle might go, and the one, the only one that, that starts getting to a, a, a size, so to speak, is Sudbury, which is fifty-three thousand dollars. Okay. Okay, I get it. Whereas Arlington, Belmont, Lexington, which together combine for you know more than half, mm -hmm. are definitely not leaving. Okay, and and. Just with all this information provided, I was really surprised that not only do we send the most students to Minuteman, but comparing us to Lexington, um, the difference between the two. Um, so obviously this is, Minuteman school is something that's very important um, to the residents and, and children of Arlington. Um, I think we more than double send the amount of students. Um, I think our next closest is Lexington. For some reason, I thought that they'd be a little higher up. So um, I don't want any of these conversations, not that they have been geared that way, um, to be totally mon money driven, funding driven, cost driven, without recognizing the fact that Miniman is a very valuable asset um, to, to uh, high school children um, in the town of Arlington, their parents and friends and family. So um, I, I was just surprised. For some reason, I was thinking Lexington would send the most, but Arlington by far does. So. I think further on down the road with Mr. Dunn and Mr. Chapdelaine, um, besides the fact of the amount of kids that we send there, the knowledge and the uh, intimate involvement in all the intricacies um, will definitely um, put us in good standing in terms of um, sort of shaping and modeling um, what the future Minuteman proposal will be um, and then hopefully getting the message out when at an appropriate time and, and funding and figure um, to the residents of Arlington. So I think you can you can uh, bet on the fact that we will have a, a spending request at our regular town meeting. So that uh, it's definitely coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a uh, vote by Mr. Dunn, a favorable favorable action, seconded by Mr. Carroll on Article Eight. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. That is also a unanimous vote. Um, next, we'll go to the three pieces under correspondence received. A motion for receipt by? So moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne, um, any discussion on the three items? One is MMA Annual Town Report Award. I don't know if the manager wants to speak to that. So uh, Arlington this year got third place mm. in the annual town report. Oh, we're dropping. What are we doing? I was, I was angry the office staff said, <laughs> be happy to still be on the podium. <laughs> okay. right. um, and then we have a piece of correspondence from our acting director of planning regarding the public meeting um, regarding the housing plan on Tuesday, February 7th at 7 p.m. in the senior center. Um, that's probably pretty self-explanatory. And then we have a request for crosswalk at the intersection of Warren Street and I think Beacon. I haven't gone on it. Yes, Beacon Street. Uh, does anybody want to uh, take any action on that? For a cr crosswalk, would that come under the, I'm keeping in mind the don't overtext TAC. Mm -hmm. um, Excuse me, Diane, I talked to Corey about it. And he feels that you should make the recommendation that it go to TAC. 
because of the crosswalk and the situation where it is. So moved. Okay, second. motion referred by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Carroll. The agenda item for the request for a sidewalk refer to TAC. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, mm -hmm. unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kapelka. Thank you. Attorney Heim. No new business. Mr. Town Manager. Uh, two brief pieces of new business. Uh, the board uh, was made aware last week. We also issued uh, a statement to the media, but we have officially hired a new director of planning and community development. Uh, Jenny Rate, uh, who currently works at the MAPC, is their assistant director of land use planning and their chief housing officer. Will be starting for the town on February 16th. She has an extensive planning resume, great credentials, and a great reputation in the industry, so I think she'll be um, Really a great addition to the team here in Arlington. Uh, the only other piece of new business is uh, last Wednesday evening, I had um, uh, the opportunity to be the speaker at the Friends of Robbins Farm Park's annual meeting nice. uh, at a home uh, up uh, off of uh, Robbins Farm Park. And it was really just a great event. They, they, you know, they asked me to talk about things that were happening in town, sort of the 10-minute you know, snapshot of a number of the issues we're facing, and they were a great group. They were friendly. They were accommodating. They had a good grasp on the issues, mm -hmm. and just you know, it was it was nice to engage with people in a positive manner in town. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. And so, um, you know, quickly, I was reading a um, article today in the State House News Service, and um, it mentioned that Mar Healy was going down to D.C. for the State of the Union, and that she was going to be talking to the Surgeon General and the White House Drug Czar. And uh, the article pointed out that she was going to talk to them about Chief Ryan and Arlington's plan to combat opioids. So I thought that was really cool. And uh, kudos to uh, Chief Ryan and his team and um, everyone else in town who's uh, been working on that. So thank you. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Um, school enrollment. Um, so the school enrollment um, task force did meet uh, last week. I think since then, I have to say, in eight years in elected office, I've never received so many um, emails on a uh, single issue in such a short time. Um, there, there's a lot of concern, about, obviously, with the uh, parent community around the uh, school enrollment, uh, particularly some of the uh, proposals that have been floated um, around the Thompson and, and how we accommodate the, the explosive growth in uh, East Arlington. So that will be taken up tomorrow uh, evening again at the School Enrollment Task Force. Um, <clears throat> last Thursday, there was a public visioning session that was uh, co-hosted, co-sponsored by the school committee and the School Enrollment Task Force at, say, 250, 300 people probably in the, in the, um, in the town hall. Um, in balcony. In balcony, <laughs> yeah, indeed, and um, I wasn't there. It I was, was a, told. Yeah, like and <laughs> balcony. There. Actually, yeah, they they had anticipated a lot of people, not quite as many people as it turned out to be. So, the groups had to be split up a bit um, and focus community discussions really around tables, just just uh, sharing ideas around elementary school growth, around middle school, around buildings and facilities and such. Um, a lot of common themes came came out, uh, I, I think, of those discussions, which mm. will be digested further as we as we go forward. Um, but uh, it was a really excellent, um, and I have to say, there's been a really excellent civil discussion, despite the the stakes and the passion that people bring to to, um, to the issues. Um, you know, when they impact their kids, it, just as you said on Minuteman. We're always balancing the the uh, dollars and the 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 real um, issues with the students. So really, we're, we're we're taking this on kind of double barrel because Mr. Dunn and I will be tomorrow at the Long Range Plan and Mr. Chaplin at the Long Range Planning um, uh, Committee, where the the school committee has has um, um, brought forward some material uh, to to support uh, the case that that um, the enrollment inflator that was put in place a couple of years ago they they feel it's not adequately meeting the, the needs of the school department there and so they will be um expanding upon that tomorrow and we'll, we'll be discussing uh f further i think um and that's really all i have a new business but but uh stay tuned because i think that it's 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 certain that one or both of of of, of these discussions are going to lead to an, a need for board action. Mr. Dunn. I uh, just want to point out to people that uh, Wednesday the 20th, 
uh, Community Preservation Committee public meeting. So the Community Preserva Preservation Act created a Community P Preservation Committee who are looking at figuring out what their first funding projects are. It is their first year of having that conversation. And so here in Town Hall, uh, Wednesday the 20th at 7 p.m. That's all I got. Is oh, there a, a projected estimate in terms of how long the training or update will be um or is it just a public meeting people come it I, lasts as long as it does i i don't know what the um, i don't know enough about what the agenda is i know that they're seeking input on projects and plans um, oh, okay and, I'm, I'm confusing yeah. it with something else i remember ms rowe saying something about if you want to come and be trained on the cpa it's two hours oh they did that already they did that already okay, okay. so this is a different this is meeting. the public yeah this is a public committee this is what should the community preservation act or be oh, okay. funding in arlington Oh, how, how do you choose? What should we look at? All that. Oh, great. And um, who is it the Community Preservation Act Committee themselves that's sort of getting the word out through various uh, avenues to different groups in terms of that this meeting's happening? Or is it? Yeah, but they're working with my office and using all our channels to push it. All right. Push it out. Awesome. That's it. Nothing else. Um, just one piece of new business and it may not even really be anything that can be reported back on I know we're you know we have the special town meeting and then we have the annual town meeting and we'll have finance committee warrant articles as well as board of selectmen at all um, if I could just sort of um, take advantage of the town manager I know for the past three years and especially last year at finance committee um, when it came to and again, this is thinking of when we were talking about consolidation of finances and, and other things, including um, recommendations by the DOR. I know there has been for the past three years, but especially last year, I believe Mr. Foskett and others um, had spoken with the CEO, Ms. Johnson, and also Dr. Bodie around the special education costs and sort of getting more of a handle on them defining them as well as projecting them out. So knowing that you have to go to every meeting under the sun, including that one, um, I would just ask, uh, not to ask you to raise it, because it's not a Board of Selectmen thing, but my memory from last year, because um, as we all do, I watch, I can't really make many finance committee meetings, but I watch them all. Um, I know it's a topic that usually comes up around Absolutely. when you're there. So what my request would be, if it comes up, and if there is a proposal, um, because I think it was stated last year there would be, because they were saying, you know, we thought we would get it this year, and my memory is you'll definitely get it next year. So if it comes up and if it is proposed, if you could just um, provide us all, you know, a, a copy of that, um, just as an FYI. And, and, and I'm saying it myself, um, just sort of my sort of, I don't want to say affinity regarding special education, but I think you know my colleagues and others sort of know the vein the route that I'm trying to go down on that so I'm not saying it's a request to be done just if it is certainly would appreciate it. minimum summary um, I just want to check with this gentleman Did, were you here for an agenda item or oh God bless you okay all right I just wanted to make sure I didn't want you to be sitting there all night and then we do that with that I'll take a motion to adjourn by so moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you.